All right, hello everybody. Uh, I'm back and today I have uh, one quick follow-up from the last video about resistors and capacitors. I had somebody looking at one of my other builds after watching that video, I'm um, doing a Liverpool build and he saw these uh, type of resistors and asked, hey, what are those kind? Those are different from what you showed in that video. Well, sure enough, they are. I forgot to mention, this is just another kind of ceramic resistor. They're power resistors as well, but they're the newer kind of smaller kind. These are um, only about, I don't think they're newer, they've been doing this, but these are only about one or two or three watts range instead of getting the big thicker ones for that higher five to 10 or 15, 20 watt range. So that's just another kind of ceramic wire wound power resistor. So get that aside. We'll go ahead and discuss what I want to do this week. I had a request. Uh, we're gonna make sure I'm in focus. I think I am. We had a request uh, from somebody also on one of the comments to kind of clarify some of their questions in general about uh, how you wire up input jacks and speaker jacks, because I was covering that a little bit on this last week or so on the on the Dumble build when I was reconnecting the speaker jacks and I was also fixing the in, uh, with the way the some of the potentiometers worked. So that's another area that I will probably also cover is potentiometers and, and wiring up your volume and tone and treble and bass and all that jazz at another, probably next week's video. So this one, we're gonna cover this. So this is a fully wired one. We're gonna come back to this and cover it in just a minute. So you don't have to worry yet. So we're gonna slide that aside. And we're gonna talk about just the two main types of jacks that you will use on amps. Now there's different styles of these. This is what's called a switchcraft style. There's other ones like uh, cliff jacks, which are more like a big thick black one. And I've seen a few other types as well. But uh, um, I'm just covering this basic because it's very visible and easy to see the, the, what these are. But the other kinds will just be the same kind of thing, but kind of packed into a different form factor. So this is a standard quarter inch uh, where it has a tip connection and a ground connection. So the ground connection is the center area here with this little guy there. And then the tip is what connects to this uh, outer piece back on this side. This one is a little different because it has a third connection. And that third connection connects to what's called the switch. And in this case, the switch, if you can see, I will try and rotate this to where it's visible. That little dimple is permanently connected as long, so long as there's nothing inside of it. But the second you take a jack and plug it in, you should now be able to see that switch is now separated. They're no longer touching inside of here. Can you see that, how that's broken that connection? I'm trying to get that into the view. There you go. So now you can see that that's been that connection was broken by doing that. So what that gives you is the ability to have something kind of like turn on or off depending on if there's a jack in there or not. And these are used to create effect with a lot of switching types. I won't be able to explain in perfect detail exactly how the fender jack works probably, but I can give you the generic idea. Uh, and there's, I'm going to link to, uh, Rob Robinette has a great site that talks about this kind of stuff. So you'll see that in, in the comment or in, in the link here, hopefully right somewhere down around here in the bottom. So anyway, all right, so let's go ahead. Uh, and now that we've kind of covered that switching versus non-switching, jump over to the fender input jacks, which is used fairly commonly. I think Vox also uses these. Marshall, I think might use a similar topology, um, but at any rate, effectively, You'll see on the schematic quite often you have a one meg to ground and then it, uh, the top one has a 68K in and the other one has a 68K in and they all kind of link into that one meg to ground. So the way that works is that there's actually two different paths. I'm not gonna be able to explain it really well, but I think if you look at the Rob Robinette part, it'll help make it more make sense. But if you connect it into this one, you would connect just to this and then over, part of the signal can go to ground through this 68K. And so this is 68K and 68K in like in parallel. So it creates 33K and I might be mixing these up. It might be the other one, but effectively uh, you get a 33K off with a route to ground that's um, you know a little different. But if you connect into this one, it connects in through this point right here and then goes through this, this resistor and then off to the signal. So it's two distinct different paths, but they also have different routes to ground. And so one of them goes directly to the ground. The other one goes through the 1.5 meg. So not only you have a different amount of that um, that resistance to ground, which is called the uh, grid stopper. No, not grid stopper. Um, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, that's that's a special use case that when you have a before a, a input to a grid, if you have a grounding resistor before that, that helps kind of uh, create part of the uh, the tube's bias and whatnot. So, uh, and somebody will probably in the comments remind me of what I'm completely forgetting on the name of that, but or maybe I'll slap that in as a comment here right now. But anyway, and then that goes off to the signal. Uh, so. The, the the explanation that Rob Robinette gives, he shows the signal path with the yellow line so you can see and explains also in good text so that you can read. I'm just trying to explain the generics of it in, in theory so that you understand what I'm trying to explain. And I think that his writing of it is easier to understand than the way I'm explaining it because I'm not doing a great job of it. But at any rate, hopefully that helps kind of understand why the switching is nice. Because as you plug into one, it switches open this connection. When you plug into this one, it switches open that connection. Each one causes a slightly different effect depending on 
which one you plug into, and that's why they're called high and low inputs, because you have a slightly different um, kind of tone that comes out of the uh, input jack as you plug it in. I shouldn't say tone, but the way that the preamp tube is biased is a little different, and also the way the signal is attenuated is slightly different. One only gets about 68, one gets 68K of resistance input, and the other one gets only 33K as resistance input, so... Okay, there we go. There you have it. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, please put some comments in the bottom. Uh, I would definitely like some more subscri subscriptions, so subscribe. Hit that little bell icon for more, and please uh, let me know in the comments anything that I can do to make these series a little bit better for you. Cheers, everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.